back to Creative Tuesdays with Liz. I am very excited to be here again today as we come together and create with each other. Um, I really look forward to this time. As it's something that I enjoy. I love to just get to create and make different things. So I hope it brings you joy as well and that everyone's had a great past few weeks and has just enjoyed their time. But today we will be creating a black glue watercolor picture. So for this project, you will need some thicker white paper. Um, if you have watercolor paper, that will be just fine. You can use watercolor paper or you could use cardstock um, or just some thick paper that you may have. So you'll need that. You'll need liquid glue. We'll have to use some liquid glue, um, some black paint. You'll need paint brushes, some your watercolor set, some water, paper towels, and something just to kind of protect your work surface area. But um, so those are the things that you will need for today's project. The first thing that we're going to need to do is mix and make our glue black. So if you just have a regular glue bottle, liquid glue bottle. Um, if you have one that's halfway full, you might want to use it uh, just so that you don't have a whole lot of black glue and you can still keep your regular glue and so it'll dry clear and everything. Um, or you could just do a whole big bottle of it and then you can just have you some black glue that you could do all kind of different stuff with. So you will take your liquid glue and you'll unscrew the top to mix your black paint in with it. And you'll put some black paint in, just a few drops. And you can either take um, the end of a paintbrush or a stick or something to mix it up if you wanted to, or you can just shake it good, but make sure the top's screwed back on really good, and then you can just shake it and mix it up well however you wanted to do this, um, mix it up. So you, like I said, you could stir it or you could just shake mix it. Now you may want to draw a picture out on your white paper first and then trace over it with your black glue. Or you might want to do a scribble drawing. Um, I know that's a technique that we kind of did earlier on in the videos and then we kind of keep going back to it. There's so many different things you can do um, with that. So you could do that, a scribble, draw something, trace it, or you could just start drawing and see what comes out. See what the, the end product is be, would be. But uh, I really want you to just have fun while you're doing this. I don't want you to stress out or Think about what the end is going to look like and be worried about that, that it's not going to look good enough. Um, I really just want you to enjoy yourself. Um, and I hope that creating and painting and drawing and just making art does bring you some type of joy and so that you can just at least have this little bit of time together to just kind of take a deep breath and relax and do something that brings you some joy. So. You can, either way, like I said, draw something, trace it, scribble drawing, anything that you wanted to create. So, let's see. I'm just going to kind of start drawing with it, and we'll see how it turns out. So I'm kind of doing this pear shape thing here. And I'll put some other shapes in it. And you want to squeeze just a little bit. You don't want to squeeze too hard and then squirt your glue out in big globs because then it would really take a long time to dry. And you are going to need to let it dry to just kind of set it off to the side while it dries um, before you start to add your watercolor into it. Um, so make sure that you don't put it on the floor where somebody would step on it or spill some food on it um, or sit on it or anything like that. So you might want to just 
put it up somewhere high just for it to have enough time to dry a little bit and it won't take very very long um, but it does take a little bit of time so you can press pause on the video um, eat you a snack or drink you some water and then come back when your picture is dried um, or you could just watch through the video and then when your picture does dry you can just jump in and start painting it then so yeah we'll make sure that our picture's good and dry the glue is dry good and the glue kind of works like a um a fence area it's like a little border a little wall that just kind of helps you keep your colors contained and separated um you could do different areas different colors you can do this any way that you wanted to with watercolor um i'd say you want to make sure that you use a good bit of water um, to kind of help spread your colors out and the paint out and everything so you want to get your brush good and wet first almost where it's kind of dripping off of there so get it good and wet and then you're going to just kind of start to kind of fill up your watercolor piece with it just kind of roll your brush around on it on the color while it's kind of getting really good and wet and your brush is soaking up some of the color there and if you wanted to kind of mix colors you can layer your colors on your picture all right so we will just make sure like i said you use plenty of water so that it's easier to kind of just move your colors around on your paper and the more water you use um the I'm not sure how to say it's the, the dimmer your colors will be. They'll be kind of more washed out. Um, so I'll you paint this same here with just a little bit more water and see. So it's the same color, but I've used just way more water. And so it's just kind of a little bit more dim, um, not as bold and bright as the other color, the other one that I did there with less water on it. So that's what happens if you use less water, uh, more water. Less water would make your colors be, you still do want to get it, your paint good and wet just so that you can get it on your brush good and get it mixed up good. But if you use less water, your color will be kind of uh, bolder and darker. So I don't know if you can see that. I really love peaches. I love how they smell. I love to eat them. Um, so yeah, I had kind of peaches on my mind when I drew this picture. And see, now I'm just using, keep dipping my brush in a little bit more water and a little bit more water and just kind of fading out that color there. And it just kind of all blends together. Um, so that's another technique with your watercolor. Um, just a little tip there to let you know about if you use more or less water, um, however you want to do this. Um, just And the only way you'll really know what you can do with different materials and medium and everything what you can make them do is to just experiment with it. You'll learn more about watercolors the more you use watercolors. And so you'll think, okay, I'm going to mix up this. I can mix colors on my paper once I've already got it started there. So I did this one with some extra water. And now I'll put a little bit of some red on top of it and just kind of spread that around. But yeah, just kind of, kind of play and experiment with them and figure out what you like the best and how, what you would like to... The effect that you want them to have on your picture and you could just you could create as many of these as you as you wanted to you can hang them up in your room in your home decorate with them you can give them uh, pictures of your artwork to people for different things um, so you can do you can just have fun creating and then do some decorating too at the same time with it 
please, please do take a picture of your artwork and post it to social media and tag us, the Lancaster County Council of the Arts in it. I know that sometimes it gets really busy and you might not have time to take a picture and post it and share it. So if you aren't able to share your picture until three weeks from now, that is fine. That's okay. I want to see your artwork anytime you feel like sharing it. Um, it's just always fun to see what other people are doing, even though we're all coming together, we're creating the same project, but I'm, they're all going to look so different and unique in their own way. Um, so I really do. I look forward to seeing this. I hope that you can get your pictures posted of them and so that we can share with each other and see them. And that most of all, that you're just enjoying it. You just enjoy coming together and creating these projects. Next week, we will come together and create a jar lantern. So you are going to need a glass jar. Um, it can be like if you've had a jar of pickles that you ate all of them of, just rinse your jar out and then you let it dry. You can use that, take the label off. Um, or if you know somebody who does canning, uh, you can just use a regular mason jar like that. Um, but you will need a, a glass jar. Um, so you'll need that. You will need different colored pieces of tissue paper. Um, like that you might would put in a gift bag or something. All kinds of different colors of that. You will need a paintbrush. You're going to need Mod Podge, but if you don't have Mod Podge, just plain liquid glue will do. Plain uh, clear liquid glue or white liquid glue will do. Um, so you'll need that. And um, some scissors if you wanted to cut your pieces or um, we'll, we'll fold, we'll make a little star. I'll show you how to make a star that you could put on your jar. Um, so just uh, gather all these things as next week we come together and create our jar lantern. And um, again, I hope that you've all enjoyed today and painting with your black glue and watercolor. And I look forward to seeing your artwork. And I look forward to next week as we come together and create. Thanks.